Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. Please invite your friends and let us share this topic together. Now, I'm not going to play the video of this lady in the screen. <clears throat> However, I have a link down there. You can watch it. Supposedly this lady, she claimed that when she was 15, um, she was doing Hajj with her family in Mecca. She was sexually assaulted. One grabbed, grabbed her bum and the other one he grabbed her breast now i'm not going to go into details if this is true or not it might be true it might be fabricated story we don't know however by speaking about this topic she opened the door for a lot of women to share their stories about what happened during visiting the kaaba so they they make a hashtag in uh, twitter the mosque me too so speaking about women going to the Kaaba and get sexually assaulted during the Hajj, it looks like there's a lot of women they suffer from the same problem when they go to Saudi Arabia to practice the Hajj. But here the question is, I mean, why a woman she wanna go to such a place? Don't she know that in such a place you can get sexually assaulted? I mean, look at this. This is a place have tens of thousands and small tiny square you know especially during the Hajj 5,000 people get killed by stepping in the top of them in one of the years in the Hajj not not long time ago so why you want to go there why somebody want to take his daughter she is 15 years old to a, such a place I mean I don't understand the logic so today I'm not going to really read and discuss the articles and those posts in Twitter about women speaking about what happened to them in the Kaaba. But we will discuss something more important. <clears throat> the tradition of the Kaaba is the tradition of sexual assault. Look at this. Look at this madness. So the problem is not that there is a perverted man, he touched you. The problem is that we have a religion, which is garbage religion, making things worst this is the best place to spread corona this is the best place to spread sexual assault you know someone might say well there's some christian uh, priest they do the same they do like uh, uh, they are child molester or even some maybe they do bad things with women this is true but the church it's not that crowded will give a chance to a man to molest a woman and if a woman she got something happened to her she can report this guy and expose him and everybody will spit in his face. But in such a place, how you can report anyone? I mean, this God who come with this idea that we have to do Hajj, don't he knew that time will come and we will become billions? But going back in history, we should know that the Hajj always was a sexual practice. As an example, if we go back, we will notice that Muhammad, after he took Mecca, took him very good time before he announced that nobody can walk around the Kaaba naked. And what kind of religion was practiced around the Kaaba where people go totally naked? I mean, what is exactly they used to worship in this Kaaba? And here we go back to the roots of this religion. This is a very sexual religion where women, they used to go around the Kaaba totally naked, wearing nothing. And women who have their own request from Allah, the biggest God of the other gods, Allah and Akbar, if she have requests, like let us say a woman, she wanna have babies, but she have a problem, she can't have babies. So when they have their period, they go around the Kaaba, and then they stand in the front of the black stone, and they touch their private part, and then they take the blood from their private part and they place it inside the black stone. And then the man, he come after that and he insert his private part inside the black stone and pray to Allah that the woman, she will get her fertility. In other words, we can say that Allah is another version of Baal, the God of fertility. Actually, if you go in the Quran, you will notice that Allah, he was in competition with Baal for he is claiming to be the God of fertility. And Allah, he claimed 
that he is he's a creator and Baal is a creator but Allah is the best of the creators so if you go here you will see chapter 37 verse number 125 it says will you call upon Baal and forsake the best of the creators look what happened here Baal is the god of fertility and the Arab believe that Baal is the one who will give them babies. Allah is in competition with Baal. I am the one who give you babies. I am the best of the creators. And by acknowledging that he is the best of the creators, that means he acknowledged that Baal is a creator too. So he is the best of what? The creators. Okay, how many creators we have? He just named one for you. Allah acknowledged that Baal, Aka Muhammad, acknowledged that Baal is a creator, but he is upset because how you call upon Baal when I can do better? So the God of fertility is very well embedded in the cult of Islam. It's just a competition between two gods. If we go actually to the black stone itself, we will find that the black stone itself is made in a shape of a vagina, presenting the purpose of the black stone. This is the black stone, as you see. And you can tell right away that there is something wrong with the shape. I mean, what this shape is about? What is this? This is a pure sexual stone. The same as the Hindu, they have a sexual stone, for the male and female organ, Islam have a sexual stone, and in this scenario, it's for the female. If you have my book, Sex and Allah, uh, there's a woman, she was walking around the Kaaba singing about showing her vagina, and she is saying now she is showing it to Allah, and she don't want any man to get close to it. This is a song she made. Muhammad, after he saw this woman totally naked, and this is after he controlled over the Kaaba, he wanted to marry this woman, for he saw how beautiful she is naked. And only then, Muhammad, he decided to stop people going around the Kaaba naked, because he don't want this woman, who he want her to be his own, to go around the Kaaba naked. This hadith in front of us, this is very authentic. You will see it's explained that how the Arab and the family of Muhammad, including his mama, including his dada, including his grandfather, including all his family, they used to go around the Kaaba, the same as the Muslim today, totally naked. And they used to do the same practice of going around in a cycle. Muhammad, he did not change anything. He said to the Arab Muslims, do as they do. Afidu min haythu afad nas If we go to the Quran, chapter 2, verse 199. Do the same as the Arab before you, nothing changed. Do the same as people used to do. Pass on from where the, the people before you do the Hajj, they used to do. This is the practice before Islam. This is a very, very disgusting cult. And nobody can really say to us that Islam is not just a copy paste of the pagan practice before it. If you remember, there's a hadith where it says, we used to worship stones. We used to worship stones. And when we found a better stone, then the first one, we would throw the first one and take the later. But if we could not get a stone, then we could collect some earth dirt and then bring a sheep and milk, that sheep milk over it, and perform tawaf going around it. The same. This is the same garbage. You see, they say to you, this is Abrahamic. I mean, what they say, what, what Abrahamic? We used to worship stones. This is a person from the time of Muhammad. He's, he witnessed he witness 
what they used to do before Muhammad come. So what Muhammad did, nothing. The same stone, the black stone, which they finally, they agree to, to worship and to bow down in front of it and to believe it's holy, is adopted by Muhammad. And Muhammad now doing the exact same pagan practice, going around the stone, bowing in front of the stone and kissing the stone. And then Muhammad, he claimed that touching those stones can erase your sin. It was narrated that a man said, Oh, Abu Abdul Rahman, why do I only see you touching those two corners? He said, I heard the messenger of Allah saying, Touching them erase sin. Do we need more proofs that this is a pagan ritual practice of a man he have nothing to do with God? How we touch in stones that will erase our sin. Even Muhammad he go farther, he claimed that the black stone is the right hand of Allah. Muhammad even claimed that the black stone is going to have eyes and mouth and is going to witness for the Muslim in the judgment day. The Messenger of Allah said about the black stone by Allah will raise, will raise it on the day of resurrection with two eyes by which it sees and tongue that it speak with testifying to whoever touch it in truth. So the Muslims believe that this black stone is a living stone. In different hadith, Muhammad, he says it is the right hand of Allah. Actually, as long as I mention this, let me see if I can find the reference. So Muslim will not say, ah, how come he did not show, that, show this hadith? You know them. We show all the reference, and yet they say he's lying. And for sure, the Muslim, they will say to you, oh, this is not accepted hadith, etc. As usual. Here we see the reference. The book is Majma al Zawaid, volume number three, page number 242. Here it says, Al Hajar al Aswad, Yaminu Allahi fil Ard, it is the right hand of Allah in the in earth. And the other hadith it says, Huwa Yaminu Allahi Azza wa Jal, Yusafi Biha Khalqahu. So it is the right hand of Allah, He shake hands with it, those who He created them. You know, and he is saying here that this hadith, the last one, is sahih, for it is, and the, the, the men of the hadith are trustworthy. The first hadith, the one it says the, the black stone is the right hand of Allah on earth, is rejected. The other one, which is reported by at tabarani uh, where it says uh, uh, it is the right hand of Allah, and he shake hands with it. And then he says, and this is reported, in the book of Majma al Zawa'id, page number, uh, number three, page number 242. And the one who reported this hadith, Abdullah ibn Mu'ammil, and he is trustworthy, and Ibn Habban said he might make mistake, you know, but all the men in the hadith are trustworthy and sahih. And always, you know, you need to ask yourself, those things, they don't come from the middle of nowhere. Obviously, there's roots of them to believe that the black stone is the right hand of Allah. I mean, now, regardless if it's true or not, how they come to this conclusion. You know what I mean? As we say, there's no smoke without fire. I mean, when you have a smoke, you have a fire. Obviously, something is burning. And the Muslim cannot reject that Allah, he have hands. Like as an example, if you go in the Quran, you will see the Muslims always, they come with their own uh, uh, false translation. And we can give you many examples. Like the Quran, many places it says, Yadi Allah, the two hands of Allah. The two hands of Allah. In the translation, they don't put the word two hands of Allah. They put authority, they put, I mean, they put everything except the word which is speaking about the two hands of Allah. As an example, if we go, believers, don't push yourself forward in presence of God and his messenger okay nothing here mentioned about hands anyone see the word hands we don't see it no hands nothing if you read 
by yourself from now until the coming year, you will not see the world hands. What happened to the world hands? Let us change the translator. I will do it in the front of your eyes. This is uh, Khan. Let us see uh, Shakir. What will happen? No hands too. Nothing changed. Let me open a different website. So maybe we can make miracles happen. <laughs> you see how hard our mission is? We are not debating about a cult. We are fighting deceptions all the way to the bones. This cult, based on deception, everything run in it is nothing but pure deception. Nothing. Period. This is Quran.com. All right. Let us try our luck. Maybe our luck will be different. I mean, now let us see. All right. There's no hands until now. Let us go to setting. And now we choose translation. Let us add some translation. I will add them all. All the one they have in the website for the same verse. Read with me carefully. Dr. Ghari, Dr. Muhammad Ghari, do you, O who believed, be not forward before, literally, between the two hands of Allah? How come every single translation, the word hands of Allah is gone? I mean, do we have to struggle, go translation after translation after translation, searching everywhere? Not a single one of them is a truthful. And I think this guy is a liar too. He did it by mistake. Did you notice? And look what he said. Literally. It's not metaphorically. If you go then to the rest of the translation, nowhere it says the word hand at all. Not a single one of them. So, if we do not have one translation getting them the rest busted, all of you will say, Christian Prince, no way. I mean, all of them, they are saying something and you are saying something. You know what I mean? So, yes, the black stone is the right hand of Allah. And yes, Allah have right hands. Actually, the hadith confirmed that Allah have two hands, which is very funny and very stupid. Both hands of Allah are right. Do you see it? And both of his hands are right hands. So when we talk about the cult of Muhammad, we have to remember that we are fighting deception, lies, sexual religion, 100%. You see, all of Islam is about sex. Black stone is about sex. The Kaaba is about sex. As Safa and Marwa, you remember As Safa and Marwa? It is a sexual practice of Hajj, where they have a statues for a male and female, one in a small mount and the other one in the other mount facing each other. And the Muslim, they go between them, which is a statues for a male. He have sex with the female inside the blackness, inside the Kaaba. And the Arab, especially Al-Ansar, they used to worship them and go between them. And Muhammad adopted the same story. So when you want to complain, as we saw this woman, she's complained about sexual assault in the Kaaba. Why you go to the Kaaba? Don't you know that this is the best place for sexual assault? This, is, this religion is about sex. When you accept to marry, you accept to be a Muslim woman, you accept sexual assault, part of the contract. Why? Because according to Islam, your husband, he can rape you. Islam allowed the man to beat you. By saying I'm a Muslim, you accepted the terms and the conditions. If you are a Muslim with no choice, you are born in a family, they are Muslims, and you get a chance, like you are in America, you are in England, you are in a free country, and you don't leave, that's mean you accepted the terms and the condition, you don't have the right to complain. Read it, leave it. All right, guys, I think we have enough for today. I hope you did enjoy our program. Don't forget to download. Uh, uh, many of you ask me why I don't keep my videos. There is many benefit of that. That encourage Christians to download and share everywhere add subtitle in their own language. 
in the same time make me feel that I did not do anything yet. <laughs> because I look at my shelf, it's empty. <laughs> I mean, what is my videos? <laughs> yes, they are not in my channel. I want them to be in your channel. I want you to help yourself and receive the blessing of the Lord by saving the life of somebody. Because when you post a video and somebody is saved by that video, you receive the blessing because now this is your work. When you add a subtitle in your own language, in your own country, and people, they watch it and they learn from it, and you never know who you save, you receive the blessing. Without even knowing, but the Lord, he knew. Maybe you do not know, you save the life of who? But trust me, the Lord, he knew what happened. The Lord, he knew that it is you who took a video, took from your time to download, to add subtitle, to do whatever editing you need to do. You did work. And this is your fruit. I want you to have a great fruit, for a time will come and nothing will help you except the fruit you do. Many people they say that we are saved by faith. This is true. Our faith saved us. But the Bible says, faith without fruit is dead faith. Which means the Lord, when he said, from their fruits you shall know them. He will not recognize you by your name. He will not recognize you by saying, Lord, Lord, as it's mentioned in the Bible. For he said, not everyone say to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will, do his will. And his will is, go and teach and preach. Bring people to me. Be a fisher men and women. Save before you ask to be saved. Even our father out of heaven is you asking the father to forgive you after you forgive to others. That is the terms and conditions of the Lord to be in his kingdom. In order to receive, you have to give. In order to be forgiven, you have to forgive. In, in order to be answered, you have to answer others. The Lord, he says, I was hungry and you feed me. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, you took me in. Prisoner, you came to visit me. I said, Lord, when we did that to you? He said, when you do it to my brothers, you do it to me. So every good fruit you do it to someone, the one who receive it is the Lord. It's not even that person. That person is a receiver, yes. But the real receiver, the one who receive your work, is your the one who created you, your creator. So I encourage you all to do good work. And sometimes the hard work is done by somebody else. Like now, my work is so easy compared to what Paul and Luke and Mark and all the great disciples they did. They paid their life. They crucified them upside down. They did feed them to the animals to eat them alive. So we cannot compare really what we are doing to what is done by the great Christians before us. Can we do little of what they did? Just little? If you cannot do the little, ask yourself, so why you call yourself Christian? And what is a Christian about you? So I encourage all to be partner with us in what we do. Download the videos, add subtitle, share the books, help people who need help, invite people here to our channel, invite Muslims to debate us. For all of this will help us for the glory of the Lord, not for the glory of Christian Prince. Christian Prince, he have no glory for a very simple reason. None of you knows who is this guy. The Lord, he says, if you give with the right hand, don't take the other hand, no. None of you know who I am, and I receive no glory of myself. People talk about me, but who is me? They don't know. No glory, but a glory to the Lord. I want to say thank you all, and I want to say thank you for those who support us by donation too. We appreciate you. And again, reminder. If somebody contact you, ask you for donation in my name, never send any money in my name to anyone. I don't have PayPal. I don't have any other account besides Patreon, the one you see on the screen. And I will not send you text messages or in Skype or anything to ask you for donation. All my work is for free. Those who donate, they are not receiving a special treatment. My books is for free and all my work is for free. So a donation is just to support what I do. It's not a privilege for those who make a donation. 
It is good people who believe that they should support me, and they do. But we don't treat them differently. So if you are a poor person, I invite you to subscribe to Patreon, because who said you have to donate? Most of people who have in my, subscribe, my Patreon, they are not donating people. So I invite you to subscribe there, so you can receive a date when we will go live, because most of the time YouTube don't even send notification. You don't have to donate a single dollar. You don't need to, unless you love to. Our work is open for all, and I love you all. The poor, the rich, the one he have, and the one he don't have. We are a family, and we are not a business. Thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you. And I will see you soon again. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And thank you very much. Take care.